While reading Ibn Ishaq's Sirat Rasul Allah and the Hadiths, I came upon hundreds upon hundreds of instances of events or actions that were taken or ordered by Muhammad, for which only afterwards a revelation was descended, justifying or explaining it by an indisputable divine decree. Can you explain this? Your observations are correct, and any of our listeners who may have doubts need only go to our website to get many more examples and details. There are literally hundreds of such examples, and I can only recite a few of them that very clearly prove the depths of Muhammad's deception, which he willfully and knowingly perpetrated against his believing but very gullible followers. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 6.318 narrated by Aisha. Sauda, the wife of the Prophet, went out to answer the call of nature after it was made obligatory for all the Muslim ladies to observe the veil. She was a fat, huge lady, and everybody who knew her could recognize her. So Umar ibn al-Khattab saw her and said, O oh, Sauda, by Allah, you cannot hide yourself from us. So think of a way by which you should not be recognized on going out. Sauda returned while Allah's apostle was in my house, taking his supper, and the bone covered with meat was in his hand. She entered and said, O oh, Allah's apostle, I went out to answer the call of nature, and Umar said to me, so and so. Then Allah inspired him. And when the state of inspiration was over, the bone was still in his hand as he had not put it down. He said to Sauda, you women have been allowed to go out for your needs. Even to attend to the call of nature, the women needed dispensation and the divine revelation that was instantly attended to while Muhammad was still having his supper by the ever accommodating Allah, the alleged creator of the universe. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 6.175 narrated by Ibn Abbas. When the verse, if there are 20 steadfast amongst you, they will overcome 200, was revealed, then it became obligatory for the Muslims that one Muslim should not flee from 10 non-Muslims. Then there was revealed, but now Allah has lightened your task. So it became obligatory that 100 Muslims should not flee before 200 non-Muslims. It seems that Muhammad's Allah, the omniscient, the all-knowing, did not realize that one believer could not possibly fight against 10 unbelievers. So Allah corrected this error and revealed another verse, which overruled the earlier one, thus reducing the odds to the more realistic of one believer being equal to only two unbelievers. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 6.311 narrated by Aisha. I used to look down upon those ladies who had given themselves to Allah's apostle, and I used to say, can a lady give herself to a man? But when Allah revealed, you, O Muhammad, can postpone the turn of whom you will, of them, your wives, and you may receive any of them whom you will, and there is no blame on you if you invite one whose turn you have set aside temporarily, Chapter 33.51, I said to the Prophet, I feel that your Lord hastens in fulfilling all your wishes and desires. Even his teenage wife Aisha was perplexed at the alacrity with which Allah very conveniently accommodated Muhammad's wishes and desires whenever he required them. Sunan Abu Dawood Hadith 2304, narrated by Jabir and Abdullah Musayyakh. A slave girl of some Ansari came and said, My master forces me to commit fornication. Thereupon the following verse was revealed, But force not your maids to prostitution when they desire chastity. Sunan Abu Dawood 3960 narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas. The verse, And no prophet could ever be false to his trust, was revealed about a red velvet. When it was found missing on the day of Badr, some people said, Perhaps the Apostle of Allah has taken it. So Allah, the Exalted, sent down, and no prophet could ever be false to his trust, to the end of the verse. Even his followers suspected that he may have cheated them, for which Muhammad shut them up with the conveniently revealed verse, exonerating him. Ibn Ishaq, page 288, the Quraysh said, Muhammad and his companions have violated the sacred month, shed blood therein, taken booty and captured men. So Allah sent down to his apostle Al-Baqarah 2.217. They asked thee concerning fighting in the prohibited months, say, fighting therein is a grave offense. But graver is it in the sight of Allah to prevent access to the path of Allah. 
to deny him to prevent access to the sacred mosque and drive out its members. Tumult and oppression are worse than slaughter. One does not have to be a scholar or a rocket scientist to realize that there is something unusual and unsavory about Muhammad's claim that all his revelations were divinely inspired when in fact, based upon all the above stories alone, not one of them could have been. Each one of these stories and hundreds more in both the Quran and other hadiths prove beyond a reasonable doubt that they were all made to order revelations authored by Muhammad as and when he needed them and then very cleverly projected them into the unsuspecting mouth of Allah, the supreme rock god of the Quraysh, to give them divine sanctification. The most shocking and disturbing realization from all of the above is the inescapable conclusion that the author of the Quran was Muhammad and that in reality Allah, Gabriel and Satan are Muhammad's multiple personalities as clearly demonstrated in almost every verse of the Quran. That is why that even among the most learned followers of Muhammad, it is impossible for any of them to admit these facts because such an admission would destroy and completely discredit Muhammad, his Quran and the whole of Muhammad and Islam.